Hey everybody, it's Mike Pesall, pastor at Gateway Christian Center here in Goodlettsville, Tennessee. Today is May Day, May 1st, Wednesday, May 1st, and this is Mike's midweek message. It's already been a busy day. I had to drive down to MTSU uh, to help my daughter begin to move uh, back home from uh, this semester at MTSU. She's had a great year, so uh, I'm, I'm a little late getting my uh, midweek message out there. So today, uh, my my topic uh, is, is, or my question is, who owns the fence you're sitting on? <laughs> Um, this this whole thing kind of came from last week. Sally and I got to go to, to Murfreesboro, to World Outreach Church, to um, uh, Culture and Christianity Conference. It was, it was really, really incredible. And I heard so many great things, and I was just jotting down notes. And, and um, knowing some of these will make it into sermons, some of them uh, will make it into to, uh, my midweek message. Because there were just all these great nuggets that you hear. And um, so what what was said... <clears throat> was about sitting on the fence. But let me set it up a little better. So for those of you who own property, um, you understand what a property line is. You probably know fairly well where your property line is. Let's say of your home. You own your home. You know you know where your lot lines are. You know uh, you know that you have from from this part of the the sidewalk to this part of the sidewalk, and and where your your yard is, and and all that other stuff. For some of us, uh, it may be a little more blurred because it's been so long, and and things have kind of gotten messed up. But for the most part, you know where your property line is, and you can hire somebody who'll come out and they'll find it with GPS and all that other stuff, and and that's when you'll begin to realize, oh wow, I'm, I I mean I planted something way too close to my property line. But so many times, if somebody wants to build a fence, they want to do what? They want to build it on their property line because, after all, it's their property line. So it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to come over a foot because then a whole foot of my property is over there where I can't use it. So people want to plant their, they want to, they want to erect their, their property, their fence right on the property line. The problem is, is that when you put it on your property line, you also are putting that fence directly on your neighbor's property line. You share that property line. You don't own the property line. You own up to that line and your neighbor owns up to that line. And so anything that you put right on the property line basically is is kind of on both of your property or neither of your property. So I think that's kind of where, you know, you hear about these things about property easements and, and it's where the, the you know, the, the local uh, authority, the city, state, whatever, the county, they have, a, they have a freedom to move about your property in those easements. It's usually especially about utilities and, and things like that. So as a general rule, there are a lot of places where they don't want you to put your fence right on the property line. They they want your fence to be, you know, a few feet over or, or like you, if you plant trees, you want to plant them so many feet over from your property line. It, it's a whole thing. But imagine that you've built that property and you put your fence right on that property line and now you're sitting on top of that fence. Well, basically we think, well, we're sitting on both sides of the property when we were I'm my I'm half of half of me is in my property and half of me is in my neighbor's property as long as I'm sitting on this fence on the property line well here was the statement that was made that I just thought was incredible and they were talking about people who just choose to be inactive about certain issues whether uh, they've been told that some issue is political so you need to stay out of it or 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 just 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 church just deal with spiritual issues don't deal with moral issues don't deal with political issues don't deal with social issues don't deal you with financial issues church you stay in your lane and just and and there there are a lot of Christians who are well-meaning and they've they've decided to sit on the fence on some pretty hot topic issues because they don't want to offend anybody they don't want to drive anybody away uh, that you know they, they just want to sit on that fence and here's what the person that said they said this they said do you realize that while you're sitting on the fence Satan owns that fence and I was like what that 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 is absolutely true. See, he and he will let you sit on top of that fence rent free forever. He doesn't he doesn't want you to get off of that fence because because as long as you're sitting on that fence, you you're not you're not coming against him. And that's really what what we want to do is want to get off the fence so that we can come against the evil. Uh and th so this is immediately when they said that the scripture came to mind. 
um, that, that we find in Matthew chapter 16. Set it back up for you. So Jesus is talking to his disciples and, and he's saying, hey, who do people say that I am? You know, Jesus at this point had spent about three years uh, going through and, and sometimes he didn't reveal himself, but now he was in the process of revealing himself um, as the Messiah, as the Redeemer. And so he asked that question in Matthew 16, 15. He says, he said, then, but who do you say that I am? Okay, you've told me who, who people say I am, uh, a great man, a prophet, a good guy, but you know, whatever. Who do you say I am? And then Peter, Simon Peter replied, verse 16, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, I know a lot of people say, okay, well, so that's, you know, he was saying, Peter, you're the man, you said the right thing, and on you I'm going to build my church. It wasn't on Peter, it was on Peter's confession. And that confession is that Jesus, you are the Messiah. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are the Redeemer. You are the Messiah. You are the way when there was no way. On that, Jesus said, I'm going to build my church. And guess what? The gates of hell will not prevail against it. So here, here, here we find that then I think that means more about the plans of hell and everything like that. But let's think about it as just being a physical barrier. That physical barrier is there to do what? To keep those who are dead in Christ apart from those who are alive in Christ. But what we've been given, those of us who are alive in Christ, we've been given permission, authority, and actually the responsibility to move that gate, to move that fence. The, the gates of hell will not prevail. So we need to get off of the gate and we need to go to moving that gate. Because every time we move it, we're able to pull more and more people that are, that are being held prisoners uh, by lies and, and by, by the manipulation of, of Satan and, and, and how he speaks to them through all these, these things and, and tells them that God is no good and that they're no good. And th we need to be in the process of pushing back the gates of hell so that we can help redeem those who are prisoners. I know a lot of times um, it's like, why don't, we just, why don't we just leave those people alone? Because they're, they're being held against their will. They're, they're prisoners to Satan who has come to steal, kill, and destroy. And so it, we can't be happy sitting on the fence that literally is what is keeping those people from knowing Jesus Christ. We want to get off the fence and we want to go about um, moving that. So if your confession is this, Jesus, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. If that's your confession, let me encourage you, get off the fence and start getting busy moving that fence so that we can be about the work of redemption, that we can be about the, the, the work of bringing people into life out of death. See, we're called to be salt and we're called to be light. So where is it that God has you right now that you can be salt and light? You and I are supposed to be salt and light in every circumstance that we're in. If you're in the political field, you should be salt and light in the political field. If you're in the business field, if you're in the, the financial field, if you're, if you're talking social, every, every aspect of life, you and I go in, we go in as salt and light. When we shouldn't pick and choose. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to be a salt in this situation. I'm going to be salt in every situation I go into. I'm going to be light in every situation that I go into. Uh, I was having a conversation with somebody earlier today, and, and we were talking about light and dark. And uh, the question is, you know, it's, it's, it seems like it's getting darker and darker. Well, the, the, the thing is, you can't turn up dark. You can turn down light, but you can't turn up dark. Okay, Darkness is the absence of light. Church, we everywhere we go, we take the light. Well, Mark, that, that area is too dark. The reason it's too dark is because not enough light has gone there. And we are to carry the light into the darkness. Don't, don't say, well, there are certain places that I shouldn't go because it's too dark. 
you should say, hey, there's a really dark place. I'm going to take my light and I'm going to take other people's light with me. And we're going to go light the darkness because in that darkness, people are trapped. People are trapped in addiction. People are trapped into to, to believing the lies of the enemy. People are confused about all kinds of stuff. And when you bring the light, you have an opportunity to help them help them come out of that darkness, to come out of that death and come in to life. So one of the other quotes that I heard, and um, it, it, somebody asked the question, you know, what, what do we do? And a lot of us wonder, you know, man, things are kind of crazy in our world. And, um, and, and you know, we're, we're concerned about uh, the, the future. Th- those of us, again, like I said last week, uh, we, those of us who live in this country, we're ambassadors of Christ and we're citizens of the United States of America. And those two things are supposed to work together to build the kingdom of God. So the question was asked of this particular young lady, she goes, what, what do we do? And, um, and I, it, was, it was a really great answer. Here was her answer. Do the next right thing with excellence to the glory of God. Now, what is the next right thing that you're going to do? It may be different than the next right thing I'm going to do. Uh, tomorrow, I'm getting to lead, um, to lead our city in the National Day of Prayer uh, at 7 o'clock here with, this, with the city's, um, we do it hand in hand with our, with our city here, administration. That's the next right thing that I'm going to get to do. What is the next right thing that you're going to get to do? Maybe it's, maybe it's dealing with a, a loved one uh, in, in love, but, but t- sharing the truth of the gospel with them. Uh, maybe the next right thing is when you take a stand on something that you've never taken a stand on before and you, you're not afraid that, that you're going to be canceled or whatever. You just take a stand on the word of God and love and say, here's what the creator of all heavens and earth has to say about this. And I'm going to stand with him. So whatever the next right thing, do the next right thing in excellence to the glory of God. And just see what the Holy Spirit does for you. I hope you have an incredible week. Happy May. And I will see you next Wednesday.